welcome to a lecture series on tourism if religion has been an ancient and important aspect of civilization pilgrimage has been an inherent aspect of every religion while religion has given a proper spiritual orientation to people pilgrimage makes them travel from place to place and has evolved into a kind of tourism in its own right called the religious tourism or faith tourism in this module we will be discussing this very special component of tourism under the following heads history and evolution religious tourism in india india's festival and pilgrim centers action plan scenario today we hope you will find this module useful in gaining a broad perspective of religious tourism and also to understand how it has evolved into a promising branch of tourism in its own right history and evolution religious tourism is a branch of tourism which is also referred to as faith tourism where people travel individually or in groups for one of the following purposes pilgrimage missionary activities leisure one classic example of mass religious tourism is the annual hajj pilgrimage to the holy city of mecca saudi arabia by the muslims or the pilgrimage to sabarimala in the indian province of kerala or the kumbh mela in the holy indian cities of haridwar allahabad ujjain and nashik which attract millions of hindus from across the world all the jews making their aliyah back to israel or catholics visiting regional shrines or the vatican besides these cities there are other important pilgrim centers that draw a very large number of the devout of different faiths like jerusalem varanasi kanchipuram Kumbakonam Tirupati Tirumala Hills Sanchi Sarnath Palitana Jain Temple etc As long as people have believed in something there has always been a travel associated with that belief Pilgrimages are part and parcel of faith itself The effort of a voyage sets a specific goal for a traveler and the visit to the holy destination was and is a religious experience in itself. These visits to the shrines enable a believer to understand and appreciate his religion better and to connect personally to the holy place. In pre-Christian times, the oracle at Delphi played an important role in ancient Greece. The pan-Hellenic religious feasts held at Olympia every 4 years and at Delphi led to the two sites becoming famous outside Greece. The oracle at Delphi in particular exercised a strong attraction drawing a large number of pilgrims. There are frequent references in Latin literature to the Atia, the leisure time that the upper classes spent on activities other than work that gave them a well-earned rest after work during their otia the romans used to visit cities known for their soothing climatic conditions such as pompeii religious tourism became popular in the middle ages when people undertook journeys and pilgrimages to holy places The growth of interdependent means of transport greatly facilitated this trend which paved the way for amenities like inns where travelers rested, ate and relaxed. The most common destinations of the period were Santiago de Compostela, Zestochowa and Rome. In the Middle Ages Pilgrimages were a collective phenomenon that was an integral part of the Christian world. Pilgrims were considered to be extremely spiritual 
and were held in high esteem by the society. Pilgrims were the initiated who sought to free themselves from the structures surrounding them and to ascend to a new level of existence. When the pilgrims returned home, they were greeted with admiration and given a rousing welcome. In medieval times, pilgrimages were undertaken by those in search of salvation and sometimes for getting cured of some deadly ailment. In short, the purpose was to rise to a higher level of spirituality and in this sense, pilgrims in the Middle Ages were clearly different from those who travelled to satisfy their curiosity. In the 17th century, those travelling for the purposes of tourism emphasised the search for truth. But the real change in the nature of tourism came about in the following century. With the reduction in working hours following the Industrial Revolution, more leisure time was available to the population. Pursuit of knowledge was considered important, with a special emphasis on art, architecture and poetry. A landmark development took place in 1828, the year in which George Stephenson invented the steam locomotive. This period also witnessed a lot of interaction amongst the European nations. The English aristocracy embarked on frequent visits to other European countries described as the Grand Tour of Europe. Similarly, the German nobles, intellectuals and artists frequented different parts of Italy. Travel for pleasure gained popularity and the growing demand led to the birth of travel agencies. The first was founded in Leicester in 1841 by Thomas Cook. He went on to become famous because in 1866 he organized the first tour of the United States and in 1872 the first round the world tour. It is only in the beginning of this century that tourism turned into a business but its progress slackened in the first half of the century, owing to the two world wars. After these initial difficulties, tourism gradually became a good business model and kept pace with economic and technological growth. Tourism has given rise to new habits, new behavioral patterns, lifestyles and changes in the general perceptions of time. It has generated a movement of culture that encourages travellers to see and understand social, cultural and environmental differences. Today, the old pilgrimage sites have again begun to attract masses of pilgrims, the difference now being that the pilgrims also come across as tourists on holiday. What does this mass movement mean? It means pilgrims are partly tourists and the tourists are partly pilgrims. Thus, they complement one another. The promotion of religious tourism today seen as both devotional and cultural. The re-emergence of pilgrimages also shows that religious values, doctrines and institutions have not lost their importance and still continue to influence everyday behavior. Some interesting statistics. According to WTO, World Tourism Organization, an estimated 300 to 330 million pilgrims visit the world's key religious sites every year. Number of Americans traveling overseas on pilgrimage has risen from 491,000 in 2002 to 633,000 in 2005, registering a 30% decrease, as revealed by a study conducted by the US Office of Travel and Tourism Industries. More than 14.7 million people attended religious meetings, RCMA members, an increase of more than 10 million from 1994, with 4.4 million attendees 
As reported by the Religious Conference Management Association in 2006, the number of mission volunteers affiliated to the United Methodist Church rose from 20,000 in 1996 to 110,000 in 2006. Religious Tourism in India India's competitive advantage lies in the area of religious tourism because of her rich and unique cultural heritage. Religious tourism is poised for a big growth in India, which is known for its ancient temples, colorful religious festivals and rituals. Religions originating in India, be it Hinduism, Sikhism, Jainism or Buddhism, have a vibrant culture and spiritual philosophy. Further, India has always welcomed even other religions brought in by different invasions into the country. Together, they present a viable, alternative way of life, free from the pressures and conflicts of modern life. The religions of Indian origin are also a major attraction to many persons of non-Indian origin because they advocate a pacifist and inclusive approach to life. India is a country where spirituality is not restricted to the temples, mosques and churches. In fact, it's the lifeblood of the nation. As a confluence of different religions, India has attracted pilgrims from all over the world. There is probably more diversity of religions and sects in India than anywhere else on the planet. Hinduism, Islam, Christianity, Buddhism, Jainism and Sikhism all have places of worship and holy sites in India. Religious tourism has emerged as a booming market in India according to the Delhi-based National Council for Applied Economic Research NCAER. The research studies have shown that of the 230 million tourist trips undertaken in India, the largest proportion is made up of religious pilgrimages. Undertaken by both rural and urban Indians, they outnumber leisure holidays in hill stations, getaways to sea beaches and even trips to metropolitan cities. As many as 23 million people visited Tirupati, a temple town in Andhra Pradesh province, to catch a glimpse of Lord Balaji. Tirupati's annual list of pilgrims is higher than the total number of travelers visiting Mumbai, Delhi, Bangalore and Kolkata put together. In the northern state of Jammu and Kashmir, 17.2 million devotees trek uphill for 15 kilometers to pay respects to Goddess Vaishno Devi. As for Indians, pilgrimages hold special significance as they believe it to be the first step towards achieving salvation. Leaving behind the comforts of worldly pleasures and undertaking a difficult journey is considered a duty, virtue and a means at purification of the soul. The land of cultures, vivid religions and gods, India provides ample amount of opportunities to come close to people and study their beliefs and customs through these pilgrimage tours and thus are incredible traveling circuits. Festivals and Pilgrim Centers of India some of the holiest places of North India are the snow-capped mountains of Badrinath, Kedarnath and Amarnath. In the central part lie Varanasi, Prayag, where the Kumbh Mela is held, and Mathura, the birthplace of Lord Krishna. In the east lies Puri, famous for the Jagannath temple. In the south are Rameshwaram and Kanyakumari. Here is a list of Hindu pilgrim spots in India. The major Hindu religious tourism centers in India are Varanasi, Uttar Pradesh, Haridwar, Uttaranchal, Tirupati Temple, Andhra Pradesh, 
अक्षरधाम गांधीनगर गुजरात अंबरनाथ टेंपल पहलगाम जम्मू एंड कश्मीर सोमनाथ टेंपल गुजरात वैष्णो देवी टेंपल जम्मू जम्मू एंड कश्मीर कैलाश टेंपल औरंगाबाद महाराष्ट्र सन टेंपल कोनारक उड़ीसा चिदंबरम टेंपल तमिलनाडु महाबलीपुरम टेंपल तमिलनाडु रामेश्वरम टेंपल तमिलनाडु मीनाक्षी टेंपल मदुरई तमिलनाडु बद्रीनाथ टेंपल उत्तरांचल नैना देवी टेंपल बिलासपुर हिमाचल प्रदेश सबरीमला टेंपल पतनम तिट्ठा केरला गुरुवायूर टेंपल त्रिचूर केरला कोडुंगलूर टेंपल त्रिचूर केरला चेट्टी कुलंगरा टेंपल मावेलीकरा केरला पद्मनाभ स्वामी टेंपल ट्रिवेंड्रम केरला दक्षिणेश्वर काली टेंपल कोलकाता वेस्ट बंगाल कालीघाट काली मंदिर कोलकाता वेस्ट बंगाल हंसेश्वरी टेंपल बांसबेरिया हुगली वेस्ट बंगाल पूरी जगन्नाथ टेंपल उड़ीसा सिख पिलग्रमेजेस द सिख कम्युनिटी इज नोन फॉर इट्स सेंस ऑफ ब्रदरहुड एंड फेलोशिप a fact that is reflected in its pilgrimage sites the golden temple situated in amritsar is the holiest shrine of the sikhs in india another sacred site is the anandpur sahib where guru gobind singh founded the khalsa panth or the pure sect in the year 1699 buddhist pilgrimages buddhist pilgrimage sites in india can be found in the states of bihar Uttar Pradesh and Ladakh Bodh Gaya is a place where Gautam Buddha attained supreme enlightenment and is a must visit for every person of devotion The Mahabodhi temple situated here is an architectural marvel Vaishali is another place of importance for the Buddhists Jain pilgrimages The Jain temples in India are a fine example of the Jain art and culture. The monumental statue of Bahubali at Shravana Belagola in the southern Indian state of Karnataka is one of the most important Jain pilgrimage sites. The Dilwara temple at Mount Abu in Rajasthan is another important site which is a fine example of the Jain architecture. Muslim pilgrimages Ajmer city of the Indian state of Rajasthan is considered as the Medina of India due to the presence of the shrine of Sufi saint Moinuddin Chishti which attracts thousands of devout Muslims from across the world Similarly the appeal of the dargah at Nagore town in Nagapatnam district in Tamil Nadu cuts across all barriers of caste religion language or region The annual Kanduri festival in May of this revered 500 year old shrine of Saint Hazrat Said Hamir Qadir Wali is celebrated with pomp. Christian pilgrimages. The festival at the Virgin Mary Church at Velangani in southern Tamil Nadu stands testimony to the harmony, pluralism and spirit of brotherhood that distinguishes India from other nations. This annual spectacle is a sight to behold with the devotees in orange robes converging on the shrine carrying their offerings The deity in this 15th century shrine is known for its miraculous healing powers earning for the church the name Lourdes of the East Vaishno Devi tour Vaishno Devi tour is the most sought after Hindu pilgrimage for the North Indians. It is a prime destination in a religious India tour. Thousands of devotees from far and wide reach Jammu and Kashmir to catch a glimpse of Mata Vaishno Devi and seek her blessings.
Such is the holiness Vaishno Devi has that the numbers keep increasing every year. Shirdi Sai Baba Tour Shirdi, around 296 kilometers, around 6 hours drive from Mumbai, is a small town in the state of Maharashtra in western India. With a population of 26,169, Shirdi is basically a religious tourist center. Thousands of pilgrims flock to Shirdi. There are several centers of tourist attractions in Shirdi, a revered place of Hindu pilgrimage in India. Ambarnath Yatra Tour Ambarnath is 145 kilometers east of Srinagar in Kashmir. In Ambarnath, there is an I Shivalinga that changes size as per the season and as the moon waxes and wanes, it becomes bigger and smaller. On the full moon day, the linga is about 6 feet high. On the full moon day of July-August, Shravana, the Shivalinga is of maximum height. Every year on this day, there is a festival. Char Dham Tour Situated in the high and mighty peaks of the Himalayas are the four most holy pilgrimage sites in India. Gangotri, Yamunotri, Sri Badrinath Ji and Sri Kedarnath Ji. Together, they are referred to as the Char Dham or the four Hindu pilgrimage sites. They are also known as Kedar Khand in ancient Hindu scriptures for centuries. Action Plan But traveling to temples and seeking the blessings of the gods is only one aspect of religious tourism and it may not interest many. Foreigners coming to India are fascinated by the gaiety and pomp that marks religious festivals. These can also be made nodal points for promoting religious tourism in India. Some fairs like the Kumb at Haridwar and Pushkar Camel Fair already draw significant tourists, but much more can be done. Durga Puja in Kolkata is a spectacle beyond compare. Myriad statues of Kali with her blood-soaked tongue and garlands of skulls in every nook and corner of the city is a sight to behold. The Ram Leela in the hinterland of Uttar Pradesh is another experience that cannot be had anywhere in the world. The one at Ramnagar goes back two centuries without a break and can be showcased as a historical and social event as well. While in principle, religious tourism in India has immense potential to evolve as a niche segment, there are hurdles to be overcome. The first hurdle is the poor tourism infrastructure in general and perhaps the even poorer infrastructure of religious centers. Adequate facilities for lodging, boarding and travel will have to be created. What needs to be done is to create nodes near religious centers where there is already a basic infrastructure present and plan day trips from there. For example, Chennai in South India can be a hub for excursions to Madurai, Tanjavur, Trichurapalli and Pondicherry. Madurai is the home of the exquisite Meenakshi temple, which is regarded as the holiest temple in India by many people. The second aspect that will need to be taken care of will be to provide the tourists with a holistic religious experience. Tourists may not find it worthwhile to come all the way just for a pilgrimage. A package trip that offers the different use of religious tourism will have to be prepared. This would require blending the ritualistic part of the religious tours with informative, cultural and philosophical inputs. Information on the mythological significance of the places of pilgrimage will need to be provided in advance so that tourists are better prepared. Traditional dances, music and theatre related to the religious shrine will have to be built into the itinerary. Discourses on the essence of the religious beliefs. Workshops on yoga and Ayurvedic practices can add immense value to religious tourism. 
religious tourism in India can provide an experience that cannot be had anywhere in the world. But for it to fructify, the seeds will have to be sown and the saplings will have to be nurtured. Scenario Today Today, travel for faith is growing into a new and unique niche. A good number of people going on faith-based journeys prefer combining a vacation with their religious travel. This trend is catching on so fast that there is now a World Religious Travel Association WRTA. The main objective of this body is to focus on the religious travel market, make the travel industry aware of its potential and help provide a focal point through which the market could grow. Incorporated in November 2006, WRTA established itself as a recognized voice for religious tourism and hospitality market which attracts 300 million travelers a year. WRTA hosted three World Religious Travel Expos attracting organizations and professionals from more than 30 countries on six continents. The association's members and partners included travel agents, tour operators, travel wholesalers, ground, incoming operators, cruise lines, destinations, suppliers, trade associations, religious organizations and group planners. It successfully brought together these segments by organizing the historic three-day World Religious Travel Expo in November 2008 at Orlando, USA. Religious tourism has registered a significant growth over the years and is poised for bigger achievements in the immediate future. As for India, by virtue of being a great melting pot of various religions and a perennial fountainhead of spiritualism, it is in a vantage position to make full use of the emerging trends in this unique branch of tourism. We will conclude this session on that positive and happy note. Thank you.